Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky is in Turkey to rally support for his country's bid to join NATO. For the first time, he received strong backing from Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan. After their meeting in Istanbul, Erdogan said there was no doubt Ukraine deserves to become a member of the military alliance. Turkey has attempted to keep close relations with both Ukraine and Russia. Erdogan also said he expected a visit from Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin in the next month. Well, let's go straight to Istanbul, where Dorian Jones is standing by. Why do you think Erdogan's come out in support of Ukraine's NATO bid now? I think that this is part of uh, Erdogan's very careful balancing act that he's performed since the onset of the, the conflict. Uh, he's giving very strong support to Ukraine, providing of uh, key military drones, which were crucial in the early days of the campaign to hold off Russia's offensive, but at the same time has refused to enforce sanctions against Russia. And again, we're seeing this hardball balancing act, strong support for Ukraine over this NATO bid, likely to upset Russia. But at the same time, he will use that as defense against critics who say that Turkey should enforce sanctions against Russia. And that is very important for Russia, that Turkey remains a, a sanction-free country because it's so important for the Russian economy. Does Erdogan want to, or is he trying to, strengthen his own role in NATO in some way here? I think that's also a key factor because at the moment uh, Erdogan is uh, blocking Sweden's uh, membership uh, aspirations in spite of massive pressure from all the key leaders of NATO. They've all been calling Erdogan and that pressure is expected to step up at the Vilnius summit next week. And Erdogan is still standing firm, saying he wants more from Sweden. He doesn't believe Sweden is addressing Turkey's security concerns. But this support for Ukraine for its membership bid will also show how important Turkey is as a key NATO member. So again, this is all all about Erdogan's very careful balancing act and his aims of getting uh, Turkey's agenda achieved. And could that balancing act at some stage include Sweden? Yes, absolutely. Uh, Turkey does have a list of demands from Sweden to crack down on uh, Kurdish separatist groups, the PKK, which have been fighting the Turkish state for decades. They want a major legal crackdown on their activities in Sweden. But Turkey also has demands from the United States, and in many ways, that is the key uh, aim for Turkey. They want a key U.S. military fighter jet sale to be secured. And also, I think Erdogan's looking for an invite from Biden to Washington. Biden's the only U.S. president never to invite a Turkish president to Turkey. Uh, from Turkey or to visit Turkey. And Erdogan is very upset about that. So he'll be looking for concessions from Biden as well as part of a, an eventual agree, expected agreement that Sweden join uh, uh, NATO next week. And Dorian, you mentioned Erdogan and Russia. He wants to negotiate an extension to the Black Sea grain export deal from Ukraine. What, what's the latest on those grain exports? Yeah, Erdogan spoke at length at the press conference with Zelensky. He's calling for uh, Russia to extend uh, the grain deal and make it longer than the, the current every two months. He said it should be longer, it should be three months. He said this grain deal is important uh, for the world in terms of over 30 million tonnes of grain have been exported, particularly to countries most in need in Africa. And that's seen as uh, or very important for Erdogan as he in the United Nations brokered that deal. So he will be using his uh, uh, influence on Moscow to uh, persuade them to open, uh, open and continue that grain deal. And he also announced that he expects Putin to be visiting Turkey uh, next month. So again, this underscores that in many ways Erdogan is in this unique position of having very close ties with both the Ukrainian and the Russian leaders. And that uh, expertise and influence will be used, everyone including the United Nations, to possibly extend the grain deal uh, later this month. DW correspondent Dorian Jones, great chatting as always.